In a previous video, we installed Hyper-V on Windows 10, so go to the playlist if you missed that. Let's go ahead and install our first Hyper-V virtual machine. So we're going to right-click on the server, and we'll choose New, and we'll choose Virtual Machine. Go ahead and click Next, and we'll call this Windows Server. And you can call it anything you want. This is just informational only. And if you want, you can store the virtual machine in a different location than the default. But you can see right here, it'll put it in the Program Data Microsoft Windows Hyper-V. So let's just put it on the desktop so it's easier for us to find. There we go. And let's go ahead and click Next. And we have the option for Generation 1 or 2. Generation 1 is for up to 2008, and then Generation 2 is for 2012 or newer as far as the... Um, Desktop operating systems go, uh, you would want Windows 10 would be a Generation 2 if you're putting a Windows 10 Hyper-V on there, and older versions are going to be Generation 1. So we're going to be putting on Windows Server 2016. Let's go ahead and choose Generation 2. It gives you some more options. Now we want to put in some memory. I've got 1,000 or 1 gig of memory. Let's go to our Task Manager and see how much memory we actually have. So our memory we have is... 16 gigabytes, so we can put in a lot of memory for this. Let's just go ahead and use 4,000, so it's about 4 gigabytes of RAM. And we do want to connect to our network connection, which right now we don't have. So we'll go ahead and have to add that when we're done. Let's click Next. And it wants to know how big a hard drive you want. Well, I'm just going to go with a nice small hard drive. Just for testing purposes, go with a 50 gigabyte. And we'll click Next. And we're going to install an operating system. Let's go ahead and browse to our operating system. So I've got an ISO file I've downloaded from Microsoft. Now you can download a free trial version of either Windows Server 2016 or Windows 10 or any other older version up to, I believe, uh, Windows 8 and 2012, maybe 2008, I'm not sure. And go ahead and click Next, and we'll click Finish. Our server is there and ready to go. But before we turn it on, we have to get the network set up and some other things too. So right click on it and choose settings. And from here, we're gonna to go to processor. So once again, let's go back to our task manager and see what kind of resources we have under performance. So under CPU, we can see that we've got a total of eight logical processors. So it'll be no problem if we give our virtual machine four of those processors, assuming we don't uh, have too many other virtual machines on there. And then, of course, we've got our network. So let's go over to where it says virtual, uh, let's see here, there we go, virtual switch manager. Let's go ahead and click on that. And we need to add a new external switch. So an external one is going to give us the ability to get out to the internet. Uh, internal would be just for communication with other computers inside the network, whereas external gives connectivity to all computers inside and out. And then private is just between uh, the virtual machines themselves. So that's kind of useless in our case. So let's just go ahead and create an external virtual switch. And we'll just leave the default name. And we only have one network card in here, so we'll just use the one that's on the motherboard. And we'll click Apply. Yeah, you might get uh, some, a message that pops up saying, hey, you may get some disconnection here if you do that. Go ahead and click yes anyway. And you might see a little bit of a problem or a blink during that creation. Go ahead and click OK. And now we'll go back to our settings and we will go ahead and add in our network adapter we just added in our virtual switch manager. So we'll click add and we'll click virtual switch, new virtual switch. And now we'll go ahead and click apply and it's good to go. So it will be on the internet once we install. Let's right click on our new virtual machine and choose connect. And we're going to click the start button. And now our virtual machine is starting up. Press any key to boot and we've got to press the key. And if you can't find the any key, then you should probably stop right now and return to your computer. All right, so go ahead and click next. And we're going to install now. It's prompting us for the key. I'll go ahead and put that in. If you're using the demo version, you should not be prompted that, or it will give you a demo key to use, one of those two. And the next screen gives you the option for server standard or standard with desktop experience. If you just choose standard, you're going to get a DOS box looking thing, which we call a command prompt now. Uh, so you don't want that. You want the full version and with desktop experience is basically the start button and the, the graphical version. So let's go ahead and click next. 
we will accept the license terms. And don't choose upgrade, always choose custom install. Upgrade rarely works and a lot of times it could lose data. We'll go ahead and choose our drive. Now, if for some reason you see multiple drives here, what you want to do is go to each one of those drives, assuming there's no data on them you want, and choose delete. Then you can create, go to new and you can create a new partition with all that information so it's all on one drive. We only have the one drive, so let's just go ahead and click next. And now it's installing. Now it could take anywhere from 10 minutes to several hours, depending on how fast or slow your computer is to get through this stage. So I'm using an i7 uh, processor with a fast GPU and a lot of RAM. So this shouldn't take me more than about five minutes. It also helps that I'm using an SSD drive instead of one of the 7200 RPM type drives. So you might want to consider that when you are going to run Hyper-V on Windows 10. Our installation is complete. It's going to restart, and then it'll be the first boot up for our server 2016 image. And we've rebooted. Go ahead and put in a password. It has to be a complex upper or lower case, at least one number. Click Finish. And there we are. We are now in Windows Server 2016 on a Windows 10 computer. And you can see we've got the uh, start button and all the different options. We'll go ahead and get that set up. We'll do some additional videos on how to do some cool things in Hyper-V on Windows 10.